Hello everybody, how you doing today? This is Dick Sacconi Prince of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. And today I'm going to review on the Sunday School lesson coming out of Faith Pathways books. But it's always to start in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God, thank you for this another opportunity to be alive and for all the many blessings you've given us. Thank you for watching over us as we slumbered and slept last night and for allowing us to wake up and see the dawning of a brand new day. We ask right now, Father God, as you will be with us as we go throughout this day. And God, just lead and guide us in the way you will have us to go. And God, give us listening ears and hearts to follow after you with our whole heart. And God, now as we go into the Sunday School lesson, we pray that you will open up our ears and our hearts, our minds. Help us to do that, to receive the word. Help us to, God, to prepare ourselves for what you're going to say to us even today. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. We're in lesson nine, and today's date is April the 28th, 2024. We're in unit two, and the unit subject is the measure of faith. The lesson subject is help for an outsider. In fact, devotional reading is Psalm 61. Background scripture is Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 28. And the printed passage is Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 28. The key verse states that Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Being unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. The lesson aims state that as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do the following. Wrestle with the interaction between Jesus and the Canaanite woman. Persist in faith when there is no assurance of a desired outcome. And extend grace to someone whom you have previously been reluctant to accept. Amen. In fact, the introduction says, many would agree that society is affected by multiple self-perpetrating problems, racism, corruption, discrimination, violence, and elitism. These systematic problems paint a clear picture that individuals, race, skin color, gender, and ethnicity can adversely affect opportunities to access and access to education, top paying jobs, certain neighborhoods, health care, and political influence. Unfortunately, these systems dehumanize people as objects vulnerable to manipulation by the powers that be. Systematic problems are not unique to secular society. Since ancient times, people have wrestled with the notion of different and to whom to include and exclude from their cir circles. Ancient Jewish practice overt religious privilege systems, and refusing to accept all non-Jews. Sadly, the modern church is not exempt from perpetuating systematic challenges. In fact, regarding whom they will evangelize or fully accept into the congregation of believers. Even among believers of the same race and ethnicity, some are slow to fully welcome those they consider to be too different from their, from themselves or beyond salvation's reach. The church in this climate, in fact, must seek the mind of Christ who came, who came to seek and save the lost without regard to race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, appearance, or lifestyle preferences. The analysis of the biblical text state that it, the first section is persistent faith requests. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 25. And the word of the Lord reads, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre Sidon. And behold, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but, to, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came, she, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Amen. The commentary says, Jesus withdrew to Gentile territory, anticipating a period of rest and retreat from the increasing opposition from his enemies. 
and he and his expanding popularity among the people. At some point, a Canaanite woman approached Jesus, like repeatedly pleaded for mercy and addressing him as Lord and Son of David, a messianic title. She asked for Jesus' help on behalf of her severely demon-possessed daughter. The woman's address and request indicated that she possessed some knowledge of the Jews and their religion. Matthew does not reveal the nature of her daughter's of the daughter's demon possession. It could have been a drastic personality change, refusal to wear clothes, violent actions, and self mutilation, deafness, muteness, supernatural strength, or a combination of many of the possibilities. Regardless of the details, the need for deliverance was desperately urgent. Initially, Jesus remained silent. However, the disciples' fact response indicated that the woman continued begging for help, begging for his help, to, in fact, to the point of their exas ex ex exasperation. After a while, in fact, the men urged Jesus to send the annoying woman away. The disciples were well acquainted with Jesus' typical response at the to the hurting. That we can't assume they wanted him to heal the child so sh she would go away and leave them alone. Jesus finally responded to the woman telling her that he was commissioned by God to help his chosen people, Israel, and not Gentiles. The desperate, determined woman was unfazed by Jesus' denial. She continued to plead for his help by humbling herself in Jesus' presence. This Canaanite woman displayed consistent faith in Christ and his power to show mercy to her daughter. How does she find courage to overcome cultural norm, norms regarding Jewish men speaking to women in public and the barrier of racial fact, discrimination between Jews and Gentiles? There is no clue in the text to indicate how she heard about Jesus, but she was evidently convinced that he was the solution to her situation. The woman acted boldly on what she had heard about Jesus. She demonstrated as much, if not more, faith in what Jesus could do than many who claim to walk with God for decades. Do you have faith that doesn't give up? Is your faith strong enough to confront and deny social barriers that promise in that promote injustice and division? All right, persistent faith requests. This woman was not deterred by what what could have kept her from getting her daughter healed. She was not swayed by, again, the cultural norms or the fact that she wasn't supposed to be talking to, especially in the Jewish culture, men talking to women who weren't their wives. And even if they were their wife, they generally in fact, didn't talk to them in public. But she was so determined to get the healing for her daughter that she pushed past all those barriers to make her requests known. But you know what kind of threw me, and, and I've heard people kind of point this out, she was crying for Jesus, but the disciples said, send her away because she cried after us. She wasn't calling their name. She was calling him. And she was, and she, and she was seeking to actually get the help she needed for her daughter. And she started off, of course, with the in fact, messianic title, you know, um, approaching him based upon in fact, what she heard and understood of the Jewish in fact, religion and of the Messiah. But when she was, for lack of a better term, denied, she just broke down. And she just said, Lord, help me. How many of us are humble enough to do just that? To come to a place where we can say, Lord, help me. I, I, I mean, I've, I, I, I know your titles. I, I, I know who you are. But in this moment, I need your help. I need your guidance, I need your direction, I need you to help me. And that's what she did. But she did it on behalf of her daughter. She did it on behalf of someone that she loved and cared about. 
a lot of us, we have people in our lives that fall into that category. And just like this woman, sometimes we have to pray for people. It's like while they are trying to get themselves together. And, and that's something that, that I'm learning, especially when it comes to things that are outside of my control, that is to petition heaven on behalf of someone else. And so I think that's a lesson all of us can actually take to heart and practice, put into practice, because truth be told, somebody prayed for us. Like the song says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. So we need to return that. We need to pay it forward by praying for someone else. Next section says, for persistent faith rewarded. Matthew chapter 15, verse 26 through 28. And the word of the Lord reads, but he answered, the <coughs> excuse me. In fact, but he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, true Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughters was made whole that very hour. Wow. The commentary says, Jesus' first response did not deter the woman's persistence. Taken out of context, Jesus in verse 26 may, may appear harsh, prejudiced, and unfeeling. Although ancient Jews often labeled Gentiles as dogs, as a form of fake disrespect towards them, this was not Jesus' intent. Translated into English, the Greek for dog is little dog, like designating a pet. Here Jesus is comparing God's relationship with Israel and, and the rest of humanity. His underlying purpose was to test the woman's faith. Her response in verse 27 proved that her faith in Jesus was genuine. The woman was not even slightly discouraged by being called a dog. Instead, she answered that even pets are allowed to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Therefore, the woman symbolically reasoned by faith that Jesus can choose as the master to allow the dogs, the Gentiles, to eat the crumbs, and that the children, Israel, either wasted or rejected. The woman's attitude and behavior, in fact, revealed her conviction that Jesus is Lord and Messiah and was able to heal her child. Jesus' response by praising her great faith, rewarding her bold persistence, and granting her request. Jesus' denial was merely a test of the woman's faith and lesson to the disciples that outsiders or Gentiles would share in, the, in God's kingdom. What, what is the depth and quality of your faith in God? Have you matured to the level of trusting him for what you need and relying on him to accomplish his purpose in your life? Such persistent faith is something is sometimes rare and uncommon among believers. Like the Canaanite woman, those who seek the Lord's blessings must also seek him personally, surrendering to his lordship and standing firm on the truth of his word. Persistent faith rewarded. And again, <laughs> this is definitely that. When given an opportunity to get upset, to take offense, to walk away, she didn't. The need was too great. It was too great for her to risk not getting what her daughter needed. And again, the commentary helps us understand that Jesus was testing her faith, but he was also not just doing it for her, but even for the disciples. When he said that in verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not meet or right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. At that point, she'd have been like, forget it. All right, I'm out. Okay, all right, I see you who I thought you were. But the need was so great that even this seemingly insult, this, and I like what the commentary said about like pets. Because a lot of us have pets, and we feed them our scraps, what's left over. 
And so her response to verse 27, and she said, True, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She was saying, I'm not looking for a whole meal. I'm not looking. I just, I need a crumb. Just give me this miracle, this one thing for my daughter. And again, she pushed past everything that would have caused her not to get what she needed. Her pride was nowhere to be found. She was in full humble mode to get what it was she needed. How many of us would have taken offense? How many of us would have walked away? How many of us would have been said, forget you then, I'm out of here. But this woman, her faith in Christ and what she had heard about him and what she believed about what she heard allowed her to keep pressing. And because she said what she said, Jesus praised her. The 28th verse, Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Mm. be it unto thee even as thou wilt and the Bible tells us and her daughter was made whole from that very hour her faith he said great is your faith even given all these hurdles all these obstacles this, 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 this obstacle course that has been laid in front of you but you still were persistent because you believed how many of us would do that how many of us would keep pressing and, pr and be, p how many of us would persevere even when it seemed to be hopeless and impossible? Our faith in God is what causes us to keep going in spite of our circumstances or our situations. So I want to encourage you to whatever you do, whatever you do, don't lose your faith in God. Closing thought says, the Canaanite woman who found Jesus and pleaded for him to heal her demon-possessed daughter was not distracted by any expressions of cultural prejudice or gender bias against herself. She demonstrated persistent faith by remaining focused and, and convinced that Jesus, as Lord and Messiah, was her only source of help. In fact, by faith, she pled, she pled with Jesus to extend the leftovers of Israel's blessings to her before fact, completing his work among God's chosen people. Such commendable faith fact, resulted from hearing about Jesus and believing fact, what she heard. You can strengthen your faith by knowing the scripture and applying them to your life. Knowing God more fully will help you to reach post-social distinctions and other differences to touch others with the love of God. Amen. The section that says your life. It says make this lesson personal by examining your personal, your personal determination to persist in faith even when faced with like rejection or have no assurance that things will work out as you desire. Like the Canaanite woman, in fact, you will someday confront your own desperate situation in life. In the face of your toughest obstacles, in fact, be determined to humbly acknowledge Christ for who he is, recognize him as, as the only source of help for the challenges you face. What else do I have to say? There you have it. The section that says your world, it says we do not look, in fact, we don't have to look far in fact, to see the results of systematic societal problems. This lesson challenges the faith community to collectively acknowledge and confront the systems that deny access to equitable sources and representation. Together, God's people can break down barriers that block others from coming to him by faith. Amen. Closing prayer says, Dear God, you have called us to be your redemptive agents in the world, in the world, and reach people without regard to social or cultural norms. 
Help us overcome our hang-ups and give us persistent faith to show your love to everyone without prejudice or exception. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love this lesson because it reminds us of the importance of our faith being persistent. It reminds us of the importance of us being able to follow after God, in fact, no matter where he is. And even at times when he seems distant from us, he does that for us to to buckle down and to and to actually make it a point to get to him. Um, humility should be the hallmark of every in fact believer's life. None of us should go through life so prideful that we cannot get the help we need. We all need to in fact be willing to go the extra mile and do what's needed and necessary, especially in fact when the need is so great. So my question to you is, are you willing to do that? Given everything that you know, given what you're facing, given how things are going in your life right now, are you willing to go that extra mile? Are you willing to persist in your faith? Are you willing to humble yourself? Are you willing to leave pride behind and come to God in submission and humility to get what it is you say you want to get and that's a question that only you can answer but it's up to me as the teacher of the Sunday school lesson to ask the question now whether you answer it or not that's on you my prayer is that you will see yourself in this lesson and see how you can persist in your faith and in the things that God has called and given you to do and ultimately that you will get the help that you need. So with that being said, let's close in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for this another day and another opportunity to call upon your name. We thank you, Father God, for all the many blessings you've given us of everything that you've done. And thank you, Father God, for this word and the truth of this word that reminds us of how needful it is for us to persist in the things which are important the things which matter to you. And God, this woman's daughter is being demon-possessed of something that it was desperate. So she wasn't going to allow anything to stand in her way. God, help us have that type of faith today. Help us, ha help us take the action that, that she did. God, to be able to bring about the change and get the help that we need. Help us today, Father. God, stir up our hearts. Rekindle like the love and passion in us that's needed to accomplish and do what you've called and given us to do. Father, we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, this has been Dickie Sikona, Prince of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is our pastor. We want to thank Pastor May for allowing us this opportunity and time to actually teach these Sunday school lessons. But not just Pastor May, also my co-labor in this endeavor, the one who, who labors so diligently and who actually, you know, we tag team on these. And that's uh, in fact, Reverend Frederick Robinson. I thank God for him. And, and in fact, Reverend Robinson, I really appreciate those words that you shared about me last week, uh, about being a friend. And I can say the same thing about you. I thank God for the depth of our relationship and in fact what it means to not just you but me as well. I want to thank God for my wife Yolanda, in fact for, for my children, in fact Marcellus, Kristen, Jessica, Noel, and Jonathan. I want to thank God for one of his greatest churches, the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, who I am grateful and thankful to call my church home. I also want to thank God for you for tuning into these lessons and getting this valuable information because it's needed. We need to know that we have help. So listen, I want you to like and share this video so somebody else can understand that even though they may seem like an outsider, God is willing and able to help them as well. And listen, we'll talk to you later. God bless. Bye.